Hey everyone, Roger here from Mastercar Experts YouTube channel and it's finally time to get to work on my Z3 cylinder head. Now I've already had this machined from it overheating and a common thing that happens is the cylinder head warps. So this is a nice flat surface now, but I want to lap my valves and basically do a valve job and replace the valve stem seal before I put this back on my engine. To do that, I do have to remove the valves from the cylinder head, and that's what we're going to do right now. Now, there's a lot of different tools you can use to remove the valves. There's compressor ones that will compress it like a C-clamp. But today, I actually have the BMW special tool to try out. The tool number on this is 11900. Let's just do a quick look at the tool. So it comes with these cups, right? This is what the valve is going to press against, right? And this is like a silicone and these are movable, so that's gonna sit in each cylinder. I only have five, one's missing. And then they have this hole down right here, and that's where I can put a head bolt in to hold the cylinder head, because it's gonna sit right here. Then I have this thing right here, which is gonna go onto the rail, and then I'm gonna be able to press down on that spring and remove the keepers, and then I'll be able to remove the, remove the valve spring to remove the valve. All right, I'm gonna do the exhaust valves first. So this moves this piece underneath. I need to rest this on top. So to do that, you just have to lift up the head and you can see that I'm lined up in each cylinder. I've already done cylinder six. It's pretty quick to take all of these valve springs off. This is the head bolt. This is going to secure the cylinder head so it doesn't move while I'm working. Just have to gently snug this down. This is a pretty cool setup. This is actually made to go on an engine stand as well. Alright, I'm going to take my tool. It just goes on the rod. And this, this is adjustable, which is pretty awesome. And there's different adapters you can get for different size valves. There is a pin to hold it in place, so I'm just going to put that pin in place. All right, we're going to start on cylinder number five right here. All right, so I'll put you right in the cylinder head with me. Now I have a magnet because you want to be able to catch these keepers. And again, you can do this with any spring compressor tool, but I have access to this, so why not use it? So if I'm going down and I can see that there's my keeper, so I had to do a little bit of wiggle. Now I'm on the spring. That's half the keeper right there. So I can come up and it should stay exactly there. I'm gonna take that one keeper off. I'm gonna go back down again. And I could walk the keeper around or try to fish in there with my magnet. There we go. All right, there's the other one. You wanna keep the springs in the same order. So there it is right there. My spring is removed. Now I take the head back off to get my valve out. All right, let's try to do another one up close again. And I got both keepers in one shot on that one. So you can see how nice and easy this tool makes this. And that's an entire exhaust cylinder done. I got a little cup for the keepers and I'm laying out my springs in the order that I'm removing them. This is the back of the cylinder head, so six, five, and I'm going to continue down. All right, all my valve springs are out on the exhaust side. Now I'm actually going to lap in all the exhaust valves first and get that back together before switching to the intake side. And I'm going to replace the valve seals as well. So I'm going to take the head bolt out and I'm going to take it off the jig. Alright, here we go. Exhaust and intake. So my exhaust valves are loose now, so I can go ahead and lift these out and take a look at the seat. So you want to take a look at the valve seat to see if there's any damage. 
and you want to look at the area right here where the valve actually closes and seals against the head. To lap in the valves, you do need a couple of things. You need some lapping tools. This was one I picked up off of Amazon. It has different size cups for multiple applications. And then you need some valve grinding compound. Also pick this up off of Amazon. So I want to remove any carbon deposits from the top of the valve. So I'm just going to use Scotch-Brite and just give that a gentle rub and try to remove any carbon deposits that might be there. So I need the suction cups to stick correctly. Take a little bit of glass cleaner. You can use water, you can use spit, whatever, whatever floats your boat. A little bit of glass cleaner on the suction cup and make sure she suctions correctly. So basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna put some lapping compound on the edge of the valve right here, put it on the mating surface and grind that in until we get a nice even tone. Then we're gonna lift it up, we're gonna look at the face and we should have a shiny area on both the seat and the valve. I'm gonna take a little bit of this Permatex compound and just put it on the valve. And you're gonna to wanna to wipe all this off after, just like so. Suction cup back down. You can hear that tone change from real gritty to smoother. All right here, how smooth that is now. Pull that valve up, pull the valve out, and let's take a look. So you can see I have a nice shiny pattern all around that valve right there, right? That's where it's actually gonna mate against the cylinder head. Same thing on the head. You can see that nice shiny area. That's where we just lapped in the new valve. Let's pull up another valve just so you can get a compare, side by side comparison. Right, so there's the nice new shiny one. You can see how dark that is. There's the face of the valve right there. And you can see the new lapped in valve to the unlapped valve. You can see where we've now lapped that in. And now we're gonna have a nice perfect seal from our valves. All right, I got a few more to go. And when you're done, you do want to clean off the lapping material and on the valve seat. Now I also have to do the valve seals on the other side. So I don't want to put this back in. I'm going to go put this in a cardboard box. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's all my valve springs set up. And basically I'm just going to take the valve and put that into a box just like that. And then I'm going to just go down. So that's my first exhaust valve, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. And I'll know exactly how to put them back in because they're all lined up and ready to go. Nice contact pattern on both of these valve seats and on the valve itself. I'm just gonna take a little bit of brake clean and remove any residual compound. And you can take a look at your work just to make sure everything looks good. You should have good contact area. It looks like a nice shiny area as compared to the nice black area that it was before. You did the valve job. The purpose of a valve seal is to prevent oil from the top end getting into the combustion chamber. Now when valve seals are bad, like on N63s, which is pretty common, you'll get a lot of smoking on startup because when the car is sitting, that oil is just dripping down into the combustion chamber and then you blow it out through the exhaust on a first start. Now on this BMW M54 engine, this cylinder head was overheated. So I don't trust these valve seals because they're gonna be harder than they should which means they're gonna fail prematurely. So I'm gonna to wanna to replace these. Now valve seals can be replaced in car. There's multiple different ways to do that. I'm not gonna be talking about that today because I have the cylinder head sitting on the table. Let me show you how to replace one of these valve stem seals. It is nice to have a good kit. And I just picked this up off of Amazon. 
not very expensive and a great tool to use for multiple different setups of different size valve seals. If you need one of these, I'll put a link up in the corner for you. As an Amazon affiliate, I do get a small commission if you decide to use that link, which is greatly appreciated and it doesn't cost you anything. All right, let me show you how this process works. Now this grabber tool has these ribbed edges in here and that's gonna help you to grab the seal you can use a pair of pliers, but usually this tool is a little bit better. And just work it out in free just like that. So it does a great job grabbing the seal. There's usually a small amount of that rubber material that's caught on this edge. And this is like a lip, you can actually see some right here. So you're gonna wanna clean that out. You can use a rag or just use your finger just to make sure that you get all of this debris out. Now if I can just get that off and then I'm gonna use some air. And blow that out. Use a little bit of brake clean to clean this up. Then I'm gonna blow out the brake clean, so make sure to wash your eyes and your light. So usually with a head gasket set, you get new valve seals anyways, and the little spring area here goes on top, and you just have to really push them into place. Now, I would start by pushing them into place by hand. On this E46 M54 engine, they do push down relatively easily. But the tool kit over here does come with adapters. The way this works is you should get the right adapter, you make sure that it fits in the seal without deforming the seal, and there's multiple different ones in this kit. And it's just a good idea to make sure that you seat these correctly. So you just put that on and give them a little bit of a tap just to make sure that they're seated. And that's all there is to it. I got four new valve seals and I'm going to go ahead and do the rest. All right, everyone continuing here. I got all new valve seals installed, so it's time to install the valves. Diane, can you give me a hand with this? Thanks, bud. So on my box setup, I have all the cylinders labeled. So, all right, cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's why I like to use a cardboard box like this. You can write right on it, and you don't have anything mixed up because when I lap these, you lap them specifically to that cylinder and that particular location. So I want to put them all back to the same spot. Now, when you install valves, you do want to put some ultra slick assembly lube on the valve stem as you're sliding it in. So we're gonna just lightly coat this, all of these with a little bit of this Permatex. Was oh, there a safety seal? Yep, look at that safety seal. Engine lubricant. I guess they do that so it doesn't leak, right? Ooh, gooey. I like it. All right, see, it is actually nice and thick. And you want to coat and slide her in. Almost dropped the box. Just like that. Just got to do the rest now. All right, that's what it should look like on this end, right? I have my valves now, so I have my valve stem sticking through my new valve guide seals, and then I have my spring assemblies. Just remember to make sure that these bottom rings are installed too, right? That's the bottom part. That's what protects the cylinder head from the spring. It's basically the seat for the spring. So take all your springs. Basically, I still have them lined up in the same position that they came out and just go ahead and put all those in. Then we need to compress the spring and get our keepers in place, which will lock everything into place and we'll be ready to go. I have to say the keepers are the worst part. So you can use some assembly lube 
and you can stick them to a screwdriver with assembly lube and then compress the spring and get them in place and you can kind of walk them around so you have access to that front area that you need again when you come up usually half of it will catch so you can get your next one again a little bit of assembly lube this is a little bit thicker assembly lube right here press it down and try try again and then position your spring so you can come up and then catch it then you can take your holder off and you can always just do a quick double check to make sure that the keeper is seated correctly you can see right there as opposed to this one right here here's my new valve and then you have the keepers that are holding all of that in place all right the exhaust side is done i'm not going to bore you now it's the same procedure for the intake so i'm going to go ahead and get that done hopefully like that just like magic all the valves are done thanks for watching please like and subscribe to asset car experts youtube channel a lot more to come on this install i'm going to be doing a full cylinder head installation into my m54 on my z3 and we're gonna have to do obviously complete timing